All right, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and uh, this is another BXJS coding live stream. And um, there's a there's this thing that is just been sitting in my head for a couple of weeks that I want to address because it just won't let me sleep. And I want that sweet sweet sleep um, pretty much every day, you know. So and this is kind of out of the line of the building a website. Um, a bit different from what we did before. So it's going to be a completely separate stream, but I just want to get this Like I want to try it out. I want to see what's going to happen, right? So um, for those of you who don't know, I have a tool that I maintain and that I build that is called exaframe The idea of exaframe is that you can do one command deployments of Node.js projects Docker projects Python projects, whatever the hell you imagine basically, right? And all of that is done through one command on your remote server based on Docker. Now, um, if you deploy it right now, it does take some time because essentially it uploads files, then does npm install and then packages it into Docker. Like it, it actually does npm install within the Docker, but uh, basically it, it can take quite some time, right? Um, now we've seen the tool called NCC from Zeit sometime around. So they released this node compiler that is kind of like par parcel or webpack, but for the node files, right? And uh, it can essentially package your whole app into one tiny script. So my, my thought was that I could actually use that to prepackage the apps so that I can build the Docker images, not just faster, but also smaller, right? Because you don't have to wait for npm install, you don't have to wait for a bunch of other things, essentially. Uh, the downside is that currently NCC doesn't really work with, um, what do you call it? It doesn't really work with uh, native dependencies, for example, right? And uh, it doesn't install dependency automatically, but that's that's a different thing. So we don't care about that. Um, but yeah, so basically it doesn't work with native dependencies. So, um, but anyway, I wanted to make a separate I guess I just want to run some tests right now, right? So this is sort of an, this is going to be a research and development stream. Um, I am gonna, art of WASD. Ah, I guess, I, I guess this is Leonid, right? <laughs> Welcome to the stream, mate. Um, yes, this nickname is way easier to read than your previous one. <laughs> Okay, so I am gonna create a new repo for BXJS folder. Um, uh, hey, Geisterreis, uh, Geisterreis, I guess. I'm not sure if, if you're German or not. Um, so I'm just gonna read it this way. Welcome to the stream. Right, so we are gonna call it um, Docker Node Compile Test, I guess. Let's just put it this way. And so I'm just gonna create a new project here. So what I want to do is I want to compare the different ways of compiling an app, um, right? So we're gonna go with the traditional approach as in um, I'm just gonna, so first of all, we're gonna create a simple web app. Uh, it's gonna be, I think, just like micro based um, project npm and eight minus y. Uh, npm install micro. So we're gonna make a very, very simple index.js micro app, right? And compare a bunch of ways of how we can package it in Docker container and see how fast can we make it. So I got the micro from site. Um, right, so we're gonna, I think we're gonna just grab the hello world thing, right? Uh, start micro, how do you release micro? Then sleep, sync await support, synced again, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, yeah, uh, no, this is send my can you actually compile that? Server mic, there we go. This is what we want, right? I can use a micro programmatically. So this is exactly what we want. I mean, I guess we could just go with for better tests, we can go with something like uh, fastify or polka or maybe even express. Because in our case, it doesn't I mean, let me think. Theoretically, we would like the it would make perfect sense to go with something like Polka, I guess, because we want to. Um, no, this is not the Polka I want. <laughs> GitHub. Uh, there we go. Because we want something very small, right? And Polka makes perfect sense. Uh, so I guess we'll just go with that. Let's try this. Okay, npm install Polka. 
and we're just gonna grab this and uh i guess in our case first of all we don't need any mealwares second of all we're just gonna have one method uh, and it's gonna be res and hello world literally right so we're just gonna have um this we don't need any methods very straightforward so theoretically if i do node index.js right now we're going to be running on localhost that is actually very fast and we're working okay cool so we got this very basic thing right now there is obviously more than one way to package and deploy it and first of all let me just do this npm start and it's going to be node index.js and i guess we're going to start with a basic way okay you know what let me just commit that git init git status git uh i guess git ignore no git ignore node modules um right git add everything git commit basic http app let's call it this way right and the first thing we want to do is we actually want to deploy it into docker right so i i think i have my docker running do i yes i do uh, let me just uh, clean it up docker rm exited there we go okay so what we have the docker file and i think i'm just going to use the same docker file that i have used in exaframe because it's sort of the your more or less standard way of packaging node apps which uh, works perfectly fine in well, pretty much all cases, but it can be quite slow, right? This is the core problem with it. So let me just copy that. We'll have to adjust it a bit because it has some bits of JavaScript in it. So we are gonna uh, do that. We don't need yarn package. We are gonna copy, uh, copy package JSON. Uh, but we also want to copy package lock JSON, right? And instead of running npm i, we're going to run npm ci, which will be a bit faster. Uh, so it's going to be exposed 3000 npm start. That seems straightforward. So theoretically, I guess, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add make file. Um, and here's the question. How do you test the perform? Like what I want to measure is the time it takes from building up to starting it. To then querying it and getting the results hey donna welcome to the stream all right so let me think uh make file measure time so i want measuring time in each target of the yeah so this is exactly what i want report time uh time shell minus c okay what is this how do i use it now that's not what i want maybe maybe we'll write a shell script for that so i guess maybe shell script uh L script measure time yes how do i measure seconds between the things uh okay that's that seems straightforward so i guess we're gonna have a shell script instead i mean we have make file anyway so we're gonna say build uh, i guess let's create a tools folder and there's gonna be like build docker shell right we're gonna have the start time and then we're gonna say okay docker build minus t uh we're gonna call it Docker nodes uh, basic, I guess. Uh, I, I don't need quotes here, I think. And then we just call it like this, right? So I think that should do it. So I'm gonna have a target built and this is gonna be essentially um, shell run tools built Docker shell. I think that should invoke it in the current work here, right? So that should not have uh what's docker not found oh right uh because uh, oh man it, it can't use aliases from there uh this is slightly annoying but um okay how do i actually fix it like the problem is i'm running on windows uh, subsystem for linux right so i don't really have the full what is happening uh, can i get my x please so my docker is actually in the windows side of the things and uh, everything else is on the linux side of the thing so it's a bit iffy user local bin can i just be like which docker exe and i just say uh, okay copy this copy ln minus s and then i link this right so um can i just like this to docker 
Uh, right, pseudo link. I, I, I think that should work. Okay. Docker. Um, yes, minus A. Okay, that works. So what we want to do now is actually want to edit my Z shell RC to kill off my Docker alias. Uh, no, not Z shell RC. Wait a second. That's my custom in my in my dot files, I think. Dot files, my Z shell, exactly. And we want to kill this. And I think I'm going to comment it in the other bit. Uh, I have too many things. I should revise it at some point. Okay, uh, source. Uh, that, that actually should matter. So this should now work. Um, blah, blah, blah. Arithmetic expression. What? Uh, enable. What? What is happening? Why do you not like this? Build. Um, Docker builds. Ah. I probably. What am I doing wrong? SH. I mean, I should have shell, right? So is it bash? I mean, okay. <laughs> let's make it. Let's make it simpler. Schmod plus X. Let's just do it this way, and then we can just say, hey, there you go, right? Um, go up, make. All right, the same error. Prepend. Uh, is there like line endings are different? Um, line. Uh, of course, line ends. That's supposed to, ah, okay, let me see. And sometimes compatibility between, okay, it's a DOS line ending, so I guess this is the problem. I have to probably edit my, um, what, do you, what do you call it? My um, VS code config. So now it should, no, it's still DOS. Okay, God damn it. Right, let me copy all of that. Um, right, so I guess we have to tweak a bit my VS code config. Because it apparently uses DOS and line endings, which is slightly annoying. So line and uh, uh, files end of line auto are in. Uh, we want um, is it LF? I think it's just slash n and the Linux, right? I think so. Um, okay. So, okay, theoretically, if we vim it now, we should see that it is no longer, it is still DOS. So is it slash error slash error? Oh. And I'm always confused about those. Uh, let's try this. So this one, right? So um, I guess we save that. We get the, no, that's still DOS. Okay. Um, wait a second. VS Code line endings Linux, Unix. Uh, slash n slash r is the DOS. Okay, uh, so it should be just slash n and I was correct the first time. So I guess maybe it didn't save it properly. This should be good now, right? So just like resave it. And vim. Now, no, it still says DOS. Maybe I should recreate it. Okay, don't save. Um, delete it. Let's, let's try maybe making a new file because, okay, build docker shell. Save. Are we now? Okay, there we go. Now it's now it's correct. So if we run make now, that should. There we go. Cool. So it actually works. It was just a line ending problem. God damn it! Just too much trouble with that stuff. Uh, lower right corner. Oh, okay. I'm an idiot. Thank you for pointing this out. Uh, that would probably solve the problem where you're. <laughs> but well, we we kind of did it the hard way. <laughs> But yeah, thank you for pointing this out. I um, I probably should have looked there in the first place. All right, so we did the end. There's the build file. Uh, okay, you are using, okay, so we have the same issue here. Change it to a laugh. We save, I guess, okay, this is a laugh. We're gonna change it all to a laugh because I mean, that works perfectly fine in Windows now. So why would you use anything else? I mean, come on, that's gotta be a default. There we go. Uh, Sublime. I mean, Sublime is not bad, but honestly, VS Code, um, VS Code has has such an incredible uh, what do you call it? Uh, code suggestions, IntelliSense, right? The uh, like the IntelliSense they have is incredible, and recently they released this. What is it called? Wait a second. I'll try to find it. Yes, they release this IntelliCode thing, which is IntelliSense based uh, AI driven suggestions, and they are incredible. I've been using it for like a couple of days. And this stuff is just so good. 
IntelliSense is not slow, not for the JavaScript and TypeScript. It is incredibly fast. Like I don't like maybe IntelliSense in Visual Studio is slow, but not not in this case. You're building Docker image from Windows against a non-Windows Docker host. All files and directories uh, are VX and permission. It is recommended to double check. Oh, okay. You don't like my permit build failed, but why is it fail? Oh, it's failed because arithmetic expression expecting primary minus. So there's, it's not a build problem. It's now a problem with this. So I guess, is that too many? Here's the question. So if I just comment that and we do echo, dollar elapsed time, whoops, elapsed time. So let's just make sure that this actually works, right? Uh, tools, build docker and uh, not found, what? what do you mean not found? It is right there. You just auto completed it for me. Uh, minus not found. Okay, so I guess it doesn't like my syntax. Um, so apparent, um, right. Start time dollar seconds. What what is? Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing dollar seconds is the internal variable, right? Arithmetic expression expecting primary minus. Okay, let's try to Google that. Sublime Sublime is fast. That is true, but honestly, with a good SSD, it's not much slower than uh, like VS Code is not much slower, right? It's going to be slower on the larger files, but. Um, yeah, okay, let's see. Blush, okay, star. So, why do you not like my uh, arithmetic expression expecting primary dollar max delay? Uh, they should be like without spacebar here. Is that what you want? I never actually, like, I'm terrible at writing bash uh, scripts. So, uh, yeah, okay, minus. No, it seems to be using minus everywhere, right? So this should be working. Uh, is it because it's running it with, uh, wait a second, so here's a question. Does it run it with um, with a Z shell? No, okay, that's still maybe spacebar now. Shell, no, okay, expecting primary minus. Um, that is weird. Dollar start time, dollar end time. I mean, we have the seconds, right? We have the start time. So what do you not like here? I'm a bit confused. Sublime extends Emacs, but I mean, uh, VS Code is also very Emacsy, right? You have exactly same command panel and everything. Like, and you can you can even have the Sublime bindings uh, right away. Uh, bin. Oh, is that what you want, really? That just just this tiny thing that fixes everything. Uh, yep. Okay. Well, that was easier than I expected. So we're gonna do this elapsed time. And then I think uh, it is dots, I believe, right? For the string concatenation in bash. So I got that, this is uh, the cache. And uh, is it just plus? Man, I should probably learn bash properly at some point. Plus one, no, not echo like this. Two, okay. Two, uh, I guess, oh, I think you can just do it inside of a string, right? Like this. And then just uh, S, yeah, so it's gonna be seconds. There we go. So one second, this is perfectly fine. Docker, um, rem, non images. Okay, Docker images, we actually want to, we actually want to build it from scratch, which means we actually want to first say Docker RMI, Docker node basic, so that we build, so that we build it without any caching, right? There we go. So now it's going to copy, install, package, and everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, holy wars are yes, eight seconds. Okay, so it takes. Uh, let's create a markdown file somewhere here. Read me MD. Um, yeah, eight seconds sounds like so Docker builds around eight seconds. Right, so this is the full Docker build, right? So we got this thing, uh, this thing working. I mean, people have been wholly worrying about editors for as long as I remember programming, to be honest. <laughs> this is nothing new here. Okay, so this is the first way. This is sort of the simple way, right? Uh, yes, I do want to test the startup time in the end as well. Uh, but like sort of first we test the builds and then we 
test the how fast will the containers actually start. Uh, we also, oh, you know what? We also should measure uh, sizes. So, okay, you know what? Let's do it this way. We need a char, uh, the table is what I want to say. So we're going to have build time. We're going to have uh, build image size. We're going to have startup time, right? And, uh, and then it's going to be build type first, right? So we're going to have this is going to be Docker It's going to be eight seconds. And then we are going to now have a look Docker images, uh, 800. Now that's, that's not, I mean, I guess that's right. Because it's literally a node image, right? 800 megs. That is big. That can be right. Wait a second. Is newest Docker image for node 800 megs of size? Are you kidding me? Uh, Jesse stretch. Where's the latest latest? Can you yeah, I don't think you can get the image from here uh, the image size, right? So um, Docker hub image stats. Uh, statistics, there was some sort of a service that actually allowed you to see the sizes of Docker image size. There was, I remember seeing something. Uh, no, yeah, I know that um, using stretch Debian or whatever. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I'm using the node latest image. So I guess, yeah, I guess 800 makes sense because literally like the whole Linux in there, right? Oh, that might be because I am using the Ubuntu and they have the Debian there as the, um, yeah, okay. So that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, right? So that means they are pulling the full image, right? You guys are correct. Thank you. Uh, and we essentially have um, 849 megs of basically everything in there. So we're going to measure the startup time later. Uh, am I, I think I'm doing the table incorrect in the markdown. Uh, is it should be like this. Are we doing this correct? And no, no. <laughs> how do you do markdown tables? Markdown table. Oh yeah, Donna, that's right. You can also see the sizes in tags, right? There we go. Where's the latest 345 megs. So if you don't have to pull image size local, and then um, let's call it image size hub, right? So we're just gonna just for the sake of the experiment, we're gonna say, okay, we got our local size and we got the size of image in the hub reported by the Docker hub. Thank you, Donna. Okay, tables. How do I do this? This is how I do this. And oh, it has to be separated by the thingies as well. Okay. Um, right. So we need uh, we need this and this and this and oh god. That is not the most fun thing to do, but okay, come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, I guess we don't need the sidebar for now. All right. So we got the nice table for that. And this is our Docker builds, which is plain Docker, eight second build time, 900 megs, unless you have the Debian installed, 300 megs if you have it. And we don't know about Stardom yet. Okay. So let's try the second way. So the second way would essentially be npm install minus D. I mean, 300 megs is not too terrible, but it is indeed big. And uh, we're, we're going to try to make it smaller now, right? So first thing, we are going to try to use NCC, uh, tight NCC, there we go, uh, as a dev dependency. And um, see, okay, build time is eight seconds because you have node image locally. Yes, this is without cache, but already with downloaded node image. So this is the case we assume to be the typical one because like you rarely pull new images, right? Let's be frank about that. Um, okay, and how do you NCC run? And we got NCC build index.js. Okay, so we're gonna have a build command over here and it's gonna be NCC build index.js, right? So I guess let's try running it, uh, npm run builds and see what it actually outputs dist index.js six kilobytes really i can just run dist index.js now and that would start the server like this thing is incredible <laughs> yep that works six kilobytes holy shit all right um 
So, yeah, I mean, download times is like, it doesn't matter, right? Because you never download it that frequently. I mean, the new releases are pushed every couple of weeks. So you download it once and then you forget about it for the next like half a month or more. Sometimes even more than that, right? Especially if you're using LTS, that's even less updates. Okay, so we have, um, we have this now and we have this, I guess maybe we should, oh man, how do I structure it properly? Let me think. Because we're gonna have a bunch of Docker files, right? I guess we'll just create a new Docker file, like copy it and copy, paste, um, how do I paste? There we go, paste Docker file one. So we're gonna rename it into Docker file NCC, right? And in this case, we don't actually need all of this, which is, of incredible and we also don't need this because we literally just copy the app as in we copy this index.js into index.js and instead of npm start we have node index.js right that that's actually that's actually the whole build that is actually making things like 25 times easier yeah so we literally it's like yeah seven lines of code okay I can't, I can't get behind that. Um, okay, let's copy this, paste this here, rename it to build uh, NCC, right? So, but in this case, we're actually gonna have node NCC, let's call it this way. Um, so actually there's gonna be additional step, which is gonna be npm run build, right? Because we have to compile it externally anyway. And then we're gonna build it here. Uh, but not just that, so we are gonna, uh, so I actually wanted to pass docker build, I need to pass the docker file, right? Because I don't remember how to do that. Um, docker file, there is minus F, okay. Uh, so we got to say minus F docker file and CC, right? And uh, then we can go or make file and say build, okay, so we're gonna say this build docker, and they build NCC, and the tools uh, build ncc.shell. And I think we need to uh, set it to executable tools build NCC. There we go. Uh, you should copy everything in dist NCC means more than index.js. Aha, uh -huh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, require programmatically external, external packages, source map. I mean, we don't care about source map, but does it? File assets are allocated. Uh, okay, so if there are any, but that, I mean, like in our case, we don't really have anything else, right? So theoretically, yes, you would copy the whole thing, but in this case, I, I mean, I guess we can write this, right? So we can just say copy dist into, um, that was a bit too much into app and that's it. Right, I mean, it doesn't change much really. All right, uh, and we also want to our MRF, uh, dist, right? So this is what we want. We want to clean up dist, clean up the image, then build the dist, package the image, and then measure the time of that. So then I can do make build NCC. No such image. Yeah, that is fine. And we got three seconds build time. <laughs> like only this already is impressive as hell. Right, uh, so we got NCC built and that is around three seconds. And uh, let's have a look at the, I mean, the image size is actually gonna be, well, whoops, images. Image size is gonna be the same, right? So yeah, that doesn't really change the image size for us. Um, that is too many. That is not what we want, there we go. Okay, why don't you do NPM install inside the Docker build? I mean, um, if we do npm build inside the docker, that means we have to do npm install and copy everything in there, right? So that means that it's going to be longer than before, not faster. In this case, we pre-build it from the node modules that we already have installed, which means it's going to be faster to build it within the docker. And that's kind of the point. Um, okay, so we now got this. Now, the next step is to actually make it smaller by using PKG, right? So this was my third idea, third step idea. And 
We got this site PKG. Are all node dependencies? Yes, all node dependencies are combined and built into this index.js. It is kind of like parcel or webpack, but for node.js. Uh, and uh, essentially, you don't have to care about the other stuff. So you just package it, push in one file, and you're done. Hey, Memphis, welcome to the stream. All right, so now we want to package it with a PKG and then use Alpine image to actually make it even tinier. So uh, that should be fun. npm i minus d pkg. So we install it as dev dependency. Uh, I mean, it's nothing new really. So for example, parcel and webpack both could handle node modules. But the um, the cool idea behind NCC is that their future work, first of all, includes the very crucial thing uh, as a native add on support, like this is something you cannot do with parcel or webpack, and they don't plan on supporting any of that, right. And this is kind of crucial for node apps. So you want to have native add ons and NCC is going to support that. And second of all, NCC is going to use v8 compiler cache, which means it's going to be up to two times faster on startup, which is kind of insane when you think about it. Okay, um, we don't have any I mean, yes, in this case, we don't have any native dependencies. So it's fine. And yes, the idea is exactly to use the Alpine image. Um, that's not really the best practice behind Docker to do. Yes, that is not best practice. Sure. But it is still like in, in our case. And in I, um, so here's my here's my here's my um, here's my line thought, right? So the JavaScript is pretty ubiquitous. And it doesn't matter where you compile it as long as the result is the same. Right now, NCC has a caveat where it doesn't compile native add ons, right? So you cannot build, we cannot build any app that has native modules like this. But if we throw that away, and we say, okay, we only build apps that don't have native add ons in this way, we can build any app and that index.js will be portable. So you can literally throw it into any node.js and it will work the same way. This is why yes, this is not the Docker way, but this will work everywhere. And it will be miles faster than the Docker way. So this is kind of the point. Okay, um, next thing. Yes, so I was I'm getting distracted here. So we want to try the PKG thing, right? Uh, we don't have any assets, we don't have any builds and images and everything. And uh, we just want to package. So we want um, package now here and we want to say pkg dist index.js, right? I don't remember if you need to provide any other flags. Uh, let's see, come on, where is the pkg? Da, 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 pkg minus help. I'm okay. Let's run pkg minus help. pkg minus help. Let's see. So pkg index.js. Uh, and yes, we need minus t, right? And. Uh, we want Alpine. Uh, we want Alpine base image because it's going to be the smallest one, right? So PKG. They, I remember they have the repository for the available images. There we go. We got nine releases, and we want um, Alpine. We got eight point nine Alpine. Okay, that is nine Alpine. Nine two ten four. Okay, so I guess ten four, which would probably be the latest. Uh, Latest, uh, what do you call it? LTS version, right? Um, t -t -t -t, that is too much. So we want node version 10, I guess, like this Alpine x64. Right? Is this how you provide it, I guess? Uh, okay. So we run this theoretically, if we now run um, npm run, okay, so first of all, we run build. Then we run npm run pk uh, package, right? Package. So this will, no, okay. Uh, version 10 Alpine not found. So is it like without v? That is slightly confusing, but you know, if that works, whatever. Or is it without x64 like this? God damn it. I wish there was a nice list of, of actually what you can do there. Okay, come on, PKG. I need you to tell me how do I provide the dem format. All right. Um, ta -da 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 -da, X architecture. So there is node six Mac. Or is it like just node 10? Is it like node 10 four? Is it like this? Alpine x64, it was saying, right? Whoops. So uh, where was it? Uh, node six. Uh, note uh, or latest 
I guess just node would work. No, I get no. We need we don't want latest. We want actually 10 locked, right? Linux, Alpine, yes, and then x64. Okay, so this theoretically should work. Come on. There we go. Okay. So we again we're gonna assume that we have the Alpine binary cached. Uh okay, it's building only for Linux. Why is it doing two binaries? I guess it's fine. All right. So in theory, we now should have this uh, index. Okay, we need to probably specify the output as well. MPX, uh, what was it? PKG minus minus help. There is a command to specify the output. Uh, what was it? Minus O, right. So minus O app. Uh, let's just, I guess let's do dist app, right? I guess that makes sense. Right, so we can kill this index over here. Uh, we got a lot of stuff now, but whatever. Okay, npm run package. So theoretically, we should now get the dist slash app file, right? There we go. So this is our binary. This is actually a binary that we can just say dist app. Uh, oh, right, uh, what? Dist. And we can, sh we should be able to just no such file directory. Oh, right, because I'm not an Alpine. What am I, what am I even thinking here? Okay, so next thing we need to create is um, Docker Alpine, right? Copy paste this over here. Uh, rename Docker, let's call it Docker PKG. So we are actually going to be basing ourselves on Alpine latest. And all we have to do is to copy Alpine app into I guess I also I removed a bit too much. So yeah, let work dear just app and we're gonna copy it into app um i guess we can just do it like this to simplify this a bit because i mean we already have that much stuff there app app and this is literally gonna be app app right so we just execute the binary itself i think that should work i'm probably screwed up something along the way but we're gonna find out in a second uh rename that um, PKG. Uh, so this is going to be remove disks, npm run builds, npm run package, uh, PKG and PKG. So rename that stuff. Okay, I think that should do it. So let me have a look at the chats that would copy it to the NCC Docker. Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, we just have it in a disk folder, but we only copy the, uh, the output package. But the last test is not fair regarding the base image. If you declare not to use native add-ons, you can use Node Alpine too. That is actually true. We could use Node Alpine. Um, that is a very fair point. So since we are not using native add-ons, uh, it sounds like a fair point to actually switch to Node Alpine. Alpine, yes, let's let's do that. Why not? Alpine, yes, and uh, Alpine latest. Yeah, that that's that makes it way more fair. That's true. Okay, so we got, uh, let me chmod uh, plus x, whoops, tools, uh, build pkg, come on. Right, and uh, we should add it to make file. Build pkg and uh, build pkg. I guess we should rebuild them and make sure that everything works just fine. So first of all, Docker RAM non images. Let me clean up my images. Okay, that's actually no. Oh right, because we're cleaning them. Um, Docker remove images. Docker uh, no. Docker minus node minus MCC. Docker node basic. Kill those. So let's do make. Okay, first of all, Docker pull nodes Alpine. I think that's it's not Alpine, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this this image should be relatively tiny. With the app and this, the Docker and CC will include the PKG binary, so the size will be skewed. Uh, but when we're building NCC, there's not gonna be a binary in there, right? Because we're not executing package, so it's gonna be just a dist folder. Like because when we build NCC, we literally just do npm run build and uh, the binary building is in package, which is which has to be called separately. So it's, I think it should be fine. Okay, um, right, let us rebuild them and remeasure time just in case. So build Docker. Yes, okay, cool. We're running that. 
Copying, yes, packaging. So this is your typical Docker builds. This is what I do right now. And I mean, it's not too long. Yeah, it's like some seconds. And then when you have the cache for package JSONs even faster. So it's actually 15 seconds. Okay, that's it. Why is it so much longer? Like we had eight seconds, right? Last time. So I guess maybe we should do uh, multiple measures to be like, um, to make it, you know, scientific at least a bit. Let's let's try to build it a couple of times. And I don't know, like four or five times should be enough. Yes, I exactly. I do RMRF on disks because it has to be clean, right? So it doesn't have to have any bunkers inside. You might have downloaded Alpine. No, I downloaded Alpine before that. So actually Alpine image takes longer to build for whatever reason. That's interesting. So literally the Alpine image takes longer to run NPM install on it. It's 15 seconds now. That's a curious thing. Wait, okay, so I, want, I just, wanna, just wanna test it, right? So we, I'm just gonna go and change to nodes latest. And I'm gonna run make build docker. Here's the, so if this is actually gonna be faster than Alpine, that's a very interesting thing. No, it's not. Okay, so it's consistent 15 seconds. I'm not sure what, how I measured eight seconds first time, but okay. It's a good thing we try it again. So it's 15 seconds. That seems to be more or less consistent across three runs, essentially. Cool. So now we can run Docker, uh, well, may build uh, NCC, right? So this is the second Docker. Cat, I can't see screen because of you. Please move. Okay. Seven seconds of build time. Okay, this is actually a bit longer. Uh, let's. Let's retry that. But I mean, it's still like twice as fast, essentially. It might be because of the, I'm not sure why, but yeah. Oh yeah, we should update the size as well. That is absolutely true. Docker images. Uh, so we got Docker basic what? Oh, uh, uh, right. Um, <laughs> I screwed it up, right? Because I have to, uh, so we updated to Alpine, make build Docker, right? So this should rebuild it with Alpine. Uh, Docker automatic scalability. I mean, it's not exactly automatic, but if you run swarm, you can have pretty easy scalability. Now it's 12 seconds. Uh, okay, about 15 seconds sounds fair. Right, I mean, it's not, not like we're trying to write a scientific paper here. Okay, uh, Docker images, right? And we got, okay. So we got 71 meg for the NCC image, 71 meg and 140 for this one. Uh, so here's the question, I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess for, uh, where was the link from Dona to the hub? Uh, come on, I know it's somewhere here. There we go. So we want Alpine, 24 megs, okay. 24, I mean, obviously that's without our script, but our script is six kilobytes, so it's like, yeah, whatever. Okay, uh, so we got that. Now we can run make build PKG, right? And that should, so here's it builds the uh, NCC build it, one second. Now I got the PKG build, it also was quite fast actually. And we got the Docker builds. It's probably gonna be somewhere in between, yeah, exactly. So PKG around 12 seconds. And then one, two, three, I think, right? There we go. Okay, Let's, uh, whoops. Okay, yeah, right, that's exactly what I wanted. 43 megs. I mean, that is impressive to be honest. And um, yeah, we cannot really, I mean, I guess we can look at the size of Alpine, but Alpine tags, <laughs> it's two megabytes, okay. Yep, two megabytes plus, what is our, um, no, I guess we wanted LA dist, and it is 36 megs, 36 MB. Um, yeah, so, I mean, more or less with it, I guess, like, I don't know if it makes sense to have the image size from hub because we, it's kind of, I, I mean, yeah, I guess it doesn't make sense to have this. So I'm just gonna kill it. 
Just gonna remove that because it is kind of pointless. Uh, remove this. Okay. So yeah, there you go. There's your difference. And um, I mean, I guess we can just rerun the commands a couple of times to make sure the measurements are more or less within the error. Scalability cloud, Amazon Azure. I mean, obviously Amazon Azure, DigitalOcean and stuff like this would be way better than rolling your own solution, you know. But if you have your own servers, Docker can be an amazing solution. Like if you just, I don't know, if you have a dedicated server or if you have your own VM or whatever, this could be um, life-saving. Okay, so yeah, essentially it's a slightly longer build time, but way smaller image size, like double. Yeah, so we, we actually, it's like three times smaller in size. Now, uh, let me just commit that, I guess. Um, right, uh, git ignore, no, 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 ignore, dist. So we wanna ignore dist. And I guess we just wanna commit that. Yes, like virtual dedicated server or, you know, actual dedicated server. For example, I, I work in the university and we very frequently get projects that by the contract require us to have our own server. So we actually buy the servers and physically install them. So it's like, it's cool if you can use the cloud tools and you don't have to manage anything, but sometimes there's just not an option. Okay, git commits at simple builds, uh, simple builds, um, okay, at builds with Docker, NCC, and PKG. Okay, we did that. Now we need to test the start time. How do we do that? So theoretically, to check the startup time, we need to run the image, right? After we do that, we should start querying the um, endpoint. And as soon as we get the response, we should echo the time. How do you do that with, I guess, shell again? So I guess just shell scripts. Uh, let me think for a second. Um, Donna, thank you very much for the donation. I just noticed it. I am not slow at all. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just terrible at this streaming business. But uh, yes, okay, um, back to the business. So we got, we need to measure startup time. Uh, new file, start, let's call it startup shell. And I guess, uh, can you use like bash while, while curl? Okay, uh, how to create a curl log that is waiting for a web server. There we go, this is exactly what we want, right? So until curl output dev silent head fail, yeah, okay, cool. That seems that seems nice. I mean, we're gonna be hammering our thing essentially, right? So it's just gonna go localhost 3000, sleep. I, do we wanna sleep? I guess, yeah, I guess like this. And I'm gonna copy the same stuff from here. So there's our start time. I guess I actually should copy the bash header as well because otherwise we're gonna have the same problems again. Gonna have the start time. And after this is done, we're going to have this time. And I'm just going to say got response after, there we go. Um, yeah, okay. So before we do that, we should, I guess we could do this all, all of them in here. So Docker images, what our images now? I guess let's start with the basic one, right? So we do a Docker run minus, uh, D minus, I read, no, I, doesn't matter, minus D, this, and we need to also bind ports, so 3000 to 3000. So we run that, then we measure the current time, then we start querying, and once it's done, I think that should do it. Let's find out. I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm terrible at bash scripts, so you know. Everything that you're seeing here is me basically learning how to write bash. Um, okay. Startup shell. Du -du 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 -du. Really? That doesn't seem correct. Okay, wait a second. Here's the question. Does actually localhost 3000? It actually works. So why is it fails? Um, okay, I can now remove this for now, right? So because it's running and it fails. Okay, curl output dev null silent head fail. 
why do you fail? Okay, so what if I run this myself, right? Uh, that doesn't seem to be failing to me. Try the curl to your local. I mean, uh, it looks like it's working, to be honest. So if I just kill all of that, right? There you go. I guess this command is not quite correct over here. Uh, backticks is outdated. Use this instead. Oh, no, okay. It's, uh, it's updated for that. Until do. Uh, while HTTPing, curl output, dev side and head fail. Uh, it seems to be the same. Wait on. I mean, we could use some wait on command, but... Oh boy, isn't there like, come on, uh, curl, wait for an endpoint 200. Yes, this is what we want. While curl so dev null, the HTTP code uh, n equals 200. Okay, here's the question. Why does it not, I mean, it looks like it should work, but it just, is it because I don't have sleep here? Sleep one? Are you gonna? No, that still doesn't work. Um, until curl man's other slime head fail. I'm gonna move fail. Head will do a head cannot get. Oh, you think it's because of head? Um, okay, let's see. So theoretically, this should work. Uh, okay, you were right. Thank you very much. That is a, actually a very valid point. <laughs> okay, oh, you know what we need to do? We need to say name. Uh, the basic test right and then after we got this response we're gonna say docker stop and docker rm basic test there we go okay so if i clean it with all oh, right because it doesn't have name yet right uh let me just kill all remove exit it okay so theoretically if we do startup test right now okay, we're gonna start uh, what uh that was not a zero seconds i guess we want not seconds but milliseconds right so bash uh, script milliseconds and to get time in milliseconds this is dollar milliseconds date yeah come on there's gotta be like if it has dollar seconds there's gotta be like dollar milliseconds right no dash sleep in milliseconds print current time with milliseconds like for, like they have the seconds, but they don't have milliseconds, really? MS um, hundred, blah, 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 blah. That would be the weirdest. I guess they actually don't. This is, this is weird. All right. I mean, sure. Let's, let's do the, this is milliseconds, right? Start time. And then we do, uh, current time and then we do dollar current time minus start time ms this is what we're, i think 300 yeah okay cool um that's actually quite a good start time to be honest i mean not perfect but uh all right i guess we would also have three scripts rename starts uh startup docker right so just i mean you could probably write it in a loop but you know what i'm feeling lazy as hell so i'm just gonna copy paste it um so we have docker rename that to uh ncc right so this is gonna be basic test so we're gonna replace basic for ncc once again chmod plus x startup ncc there we go and let's try that ncc shell 85 milli are you kidding me right now wait 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 wait. is this for real it took longer to stop and clean up than start this thing up are you holy shit look <laughs> Look at this stuff. Yes, 56 milliseconds until like from the time that we run the container to time it started and starts responding. This is insane. 
All right, I am really curious now to see how the um, PKG one will behave and if it's gonna be faster or slower. We're gonna try PKG one, right? So I'm gonna do a PKG test and we're gonna write, I think it's called node PKG, right? Uh, yes, okay. So I, I, pro I, like, I mean, properly we should write one nice script that would have all of that in one, but whatever. Okay, uh, Chmod plus six startup PKG. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, it is PKG script broken. Wait a second, Docker BS minus A. So we got this exited. Docker logs. Okay, I think our PKG test. Uh, whoops, PKG test might be slightly broken. Uh, yes, indeed it is. So what are you not? Oh, I think you cannot just copy to Alpine because there are some dependencies missing if I remember correctly. Uh, right, 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 right. Yes, you need some, uh, okay. I remember that problem. I encountered this while building Exoframe. So we have to uh, tweak the build a bit. Uh, it's a Docker file and we need to install some dependencies, yes. Okay, uh, so this PKG thing, it will be like, okay, this will make it slightly bigger. We need updates, no cache. So I think we don't need the pip and yarn, but we need the libstd C++ and libgcc, otherwise it won't actually work. All right, uh, so we, I, I, yeah, and that means we have to re-record re our, um, our measurements. Make build, what? Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Make builds PKG, right? So yeah, this would mean that when actually the image size is gonna be slightly larger and the build time is gonna be longer, at least the first time, until you cache that specific layer. And here's the question. Um, is there like Alpine image for node PKG? <laughs> is there like a specific image for PKG? Uh, is it pine node docker pkg build and run small nodes uh so this is done done i know this is something different uh this is yes alpine 37 from builder pkg okay they don't actually run anything like this like json binary scripts blah, 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 blah. target node 9 out pkg pkg binary uh, multi-stage builds da, 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 da. okay yeah so they just have the base file that basically does this okay got it and okay maybe we should do that as well to also um to decrease the size of the resulting image right because they remove the caching afterwards that might be worth it but 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 um what the font in VS Code? I think it's default one. I haven't actually, I mean, I only changed the theme. So I'm using this uh, color theme, One Dark Pro. So whatever the One Dark Pro theme has, this is what I'm using. There's like nothing, nothing really changed. Okay, 15 seconds build time. Let's just run it a couple more times to make sure. So it's, it's basically the same time as it takes to build a normal Docker image. Okay, yeah, so definitely this, Building the dependent libraries does takes quite a bit. Uh, 13 seconds, okay. I guess it's more or less on par, like yeah, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I guess 14 seconds would probably be fair. Totally scientific measurements. <laughs> 30, yeah, okay, 13, 14 seconds. So let's, let's put it in 30. Okay, Docker images. And it is 45. Okay, so the image size actually haven't changed that much. So just a couple of megabytes. All right, so now we could actually change the make file and say test, uh, so startup docker. Eh, no, tools, um, startup docker shell. And then we do the same for, whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. Um, so we do startup docker, we do ncc, and we do pkg, right? Okay. So now we can actually measure, make startup docker, 
320, 318, 340, 300, I guess 325 makes sense, right? So 325 milliseconds. Okay. Make startup uh, NCC. This is the next one we want to test. Jesus Christ, the difference is insane already. Like we didn't even do that much. We literally just packaged this thing and then that's basically all we did. 55, that's like 80 to 60. I guess 70 would be probably somewhere in the middle, right? Come on, why does it take so much to stop it? It's like literally stopping takes longer than 44. Jeez. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to change this thing from stop to kill because screw it. I don't want to wait. Uh, 43, 46. Okay, let's, let's call it 60. I think that will be fair because there are sometimes it takes quite much longer. Make startup time PKG. So let's try this one. And did the image still... You have to remove... Oh, okay. Docker kill all. Docker RM exited. We actually should probably test the container again, right? Because I even though I changed the Docker file, I haven't actually tried if the container works. So we are going to copy this and be like, okay. See, does it run? Okay, now it runs. And does it, does it actually respond to my request? It does. Okay, so now it works. So it was just dependencies missing. Docker RM exited. There we go. And now we can actually make start uh, PKG. So this is what I want to test. That's actually long. That is interesting. Yeah, it requires definitely slow. And uh, I'm really curious why does pkg takes longer than the just ncc compiled thing this doesn't make much sense let me just rename this to kill as well yeah it's actually longer than the normal node even though the image size is smaller huh i guess there is an overhead in packaging everything together that is interesting PKG, uh, no, but doesn't PKG actually compiles the codes to the V8 bytecode in the end? At least that was my understanding of how it works. Maybe I'm wrong. PKG needs to, uh, so I guess, hmm, that is interesting. Uh, hello, SVTSMKA. I. <laughs> I honestly don't know how to read your username. Sorry, welcome to the stream. All right, so actually longer, it takes longer. It's 430, so that is so curious. It is actually slower than just running node, even, you know, even though you don't need to resolve requires. So the optimal way is actually to just use NCC. I am, okay, wait a second, what is, Where's the PKG thing? Let's have a have a quick glance at this thing. Right. Uh, command line and phrase is run. Make commercial version. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. So targets config script asset option build. Base binaries usage snapshot system. So yeah, this is what it used, right? So it does the snapshots and then uh, executes the node on them. I thought. It would actually pre-compile it, but I guess this is wrong. So I guess using PKG is not that helpful. So unless you want a single binary, right? If it's just for the binary, then it works perfectly fine. But if you want faster startup times, yeah, it seems like uh, accessing the snapshot does take quite some time, even though, so it's basically like 100 milliseconds overhead, if you can see from here. Hmm, that's curious. Okay, we can commit that. That gets uh, commit fix pkg docker file add startup startup time measurements. Okay, that is curious. I mean, may yeah, maybe I just don't completely understand how the pkg works because I I actually didn't you know look at the source code and it didn't delve into it. 
but maybe it's worth looking into that. But it looks like so far the optimal solution is literally to just run NCC on the client machine and then just send that one or dist folder, which will be like a bunch of files. Most of the time it's probably going to be one file. That's going to be smaller, faster, and simpler essentially. And if you don't have native dependencies, it's going to be super tiny because it's Alpine. That is interesting. Huh. Okay, so I am going to... I'm going to push this to the GitHub for now. If you guys have any questions, throw them into the chat right now. If not, then um, I guess we can wrap it up here. How big is the app binary? I mean, the binary itself is literally the uh, Node.js plus your code, right? So it's like 38 megs. So you got the Node binary, which is like 35 or something, 36. And then you got the couple of megabytes of the snapshot and PKG stuff. Um, but it shouldn't take longer than uh, shouldn't. I mean, at least in my head, it, it it wasn't like, you know, it will take much longer than running the node itself, but apparently it will. So I guess I just don't understand PKG enough. What is the startup time locally? Um, yeah, we can measure that. We can try. Um, let's see. Uh, let's create a new startup local shell. I'm going to copy this. And we are just gonna stay okay. Start time, Carl. Um, yeah, okay. I actually we're gonna say nodes dist uh, index.js. So this is gonna be NCC one, right? And uh, just gonna do uh, man, how do I how do I how do you control background processes in bash? Bash, I no, but that's one, but there won't be a startup time, right? Because time will only respawn once the app closes. This is not what we want to measure. Bash starts background process. Uh, I mean, I guess we can just put ampersand at the end, but yeah, but how the hell do you track it? A no hop. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Whatever. Don't even care. We're just going to kill it manually afterwards. Okay. So this is going to be tests. Uh, let's, let's test. Oh, I cannot actually do that because we need to build EKG, we need to build uh, Linux, right? Okay, npm run package. Um, I mean, PKG, maybe not so much, but using the, uh, using the NCC is apparently worth it, like easily because there's not that much downsides. And it improves the perform. Like, look at this difference. Like two times faster build time, two times smaller image size. F what is it? Five times faster startup and all of that just by running a command. Like, come on, why would you not do that? Okay, so we packaged it into the app. So we're gonna run app, da, da, da. okay. Let's do it, tools, tools, no, okay. Uh, tools, startup, local, invalid or unexpected token. Wait, 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 what? Why is it invalid? What? Okay. Did I screw something up? Oh, app dist index JS. That seems to be, okay, npm run builds. NPM run package. Let's try this again. A dist app. Can you run it now? Okay, now it works. Right. Um, so there's no background jobs. Okay. So tools, startup, local shell. Uh, is it because of ampersand in the end? Is that what this article is talking about? So commands. Um, we run it from bash script. Uh, share minus C, slip, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, I guess we can try with a no hoop, right? <laughs> Maybe that works. No hoop. Does NCC affect the performance of your code? No, it's literally a bundler. Like it will make it faster because the node doesn't have to traverse the required tree, right? Because it's just one file, it just loads it, parses it, compiles it to V8 bytecode and executes it. It actually makes it faster. This is why we have. This is why we see those improvements in 
And uh, okay, what is happening? Why does it take so much time? Doesn't seem to be right. Okay. Is there like 25 nodes now running in the background? Um, let me see, grab notes. No, there is none. Okay. Oh, because I need to actually PS minus IL grab app. Nope. Um, I guess I'm doing something wrong again. Okay, so wait a second. <laughs> Shell script backgrounds. Ah, come on. Shell script uh, backgrounds time. Uh, Teladry, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Okay, launch background script and check when it ends. Uh, my process, so that should work, right? Oh, I'm an idiot. God damn it. I'm running Node app, right? Of course that won't work. There we go. This is what we need to do. Okay, yeah. There we go. Okay, 900 milliseconds. Why is it taking so much? Um, okay, let's see. Is it, does it close us with... Um, Okay, but that's theoretically no. Okay, still up. There we go. So theoretically, there should be no more apps in there. There we go. Yeah, okay. And how do I kill it now? Uh, PID. Okay, so this is how we get the PID. And then we can just say kill dollar pin right so this theoretically this should automatically clean this up but 900 it's actually slower locally i guess maybe because it starts the thing i have virus protection disabled because otherwise npm install takes freaking ages <laughs> so i remember that advice and i am always disabling it before actually working on anything yeah it's actually even slower than in docker which is Ah, you know what? That actually might be that might be an overhead of the um, Windows subsystem for Linux, right? So let's try let's try compiling it for Windows. Actually, um, this might be the case. Uh, so let's remove this app, and this is gonna be this app exe, and then we're gonna be like uh, npm run package. It might because like when you run anything in the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, it has to literally translate the calls between the Linux to Windows, right? Which adds its own overhead. So maybe if we run it like this, um, I, can we do this? As if we can, this is going to be amazing. Start, uh, no, with uh, tools. I guess we can't. This makes me a bit sad. But uh, right, how do we test that? Um, right, okay, wait a second. So DSL bash run exe file. I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that because VSL is pretty flexible and there's like 200 different ways of doing things. I think this they have like you can run the VSL exe and then some Linux command. And I think there is a way to do the reverse as well. Uh, run Windows tools from Linux, Notepad XZ. Yeah, so that's supposed to be working, I guess. Okay, here's the question. Does the actually just running this app XZ works? No, it doesn't. Uh, invalid argument. Oh, okay. So it actually the compilation itself, the app itself doesn't work. What if I start another terminal and try to run it from here? So the dist. Okay, so I guess it tries to run it from the wrong side. Um, right, here's the question. What if I do, uh, no, that's not what I want. What if I do this, VSL tools startup uh, local, VSL shell, uh, no, uh, we want backslashes. Okay, so it's the same problem. 
Set compose convert windows path one. Um, yeah, let's try doing that. Um, so I guess I want to do this in here, right? And then run tools startup local. Yep, same problem. Okay, so the like <laughs> I mean I guess I could delve into the um, what do you call it? Power power script. But you know what? If you're interested of the local overheads, you can, you can try it yourself. I feel like this is gonna be way too. I'm probably gonna fire up the, my Mac uh, a bit later and try it locally, because this this uh, like VSL obviously adds too much overhead to this. Even though you know there's like a few hundred milliseconds, that's still a lot. And I don't want to dive deeper into this. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, get diff. What do I have in package JSON? Okay. Reset that, remove tools, start up local. Okay. You know what? I think we're done. <laughs> that was, I think it was enough. I mean, even with that, we can already see that the NCC benchmark is, is a way better way. No, I mean, absolutely get it. I would also be very interested to see how much locally would it, you know, how much uh, better would it be locally, but uh, with Windows is not that easy apparently. So there you go. <laughs> All right, uh, let me just push it into the BXJS uh, GitHub. Uh, meanwhile, feel free to send your questions or anything you wanna ask into the chat. Um, comparison of ways to build Docker image for Node.js. Um, this. And I guess we should probably also write this here. Um, build type uh, naive metrics from local builds. Windows 10 uh, Docker for Windows. That probably is enough. There we go. Okay. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess we should get status, get ads. Da -da -da, get commit update read me there we go all right um i guess let me just push it over here remote at origin and uh, push origin master and then we're basically done uh yeah right oh, man. i have to really set up somehow so i don't have to enter the passphrase every time that's getting a bit annoying all right uh, is it live now? Yeah, it is cool. But NCC is seriously impressive. Like if this is even without using cache, I think. So they are not using the V8. Um, here's the sites, NCC, uh, GitHub, there we go. I believe they are still not using cache. So I'm really curious to see how that will develop and what will happen once they've add the V8 compile cache which is kind of great. Legacy, legacy, more, so there's more info. There's a minification pull request. Oh, there's a branch already, okay, cool. Uh, experimental cache flag, code coverage, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that means we're gonna see a release quite soon, it's like five days ago. There's some code from four days ago. Yeah, so I'm really like, this NCC compiler makes me very excited about the future of Node.js apps and about the, you know, the speed and everything. If you check it out, you can build it and test it. I'm too lazy for that. But like the checking out branches and building and always, you know, doing that stuff is too much time. I already spent like almost one and a half hour testing just this tiny stuff. Okay, we found, what? I just pushed it. What vulnerability? What are you talking about? Reptiles. Where is that coming from? MPM audit. That polka. No, your your what? What is this? Cryptiles. Where is it coming from? CVE 2018 10. Uh, that is MPM package. Our version contains insufficient entropy vulnerability. Oh, okay. Ah, who cares about that? Insufficient entropy. That's not even vulnerability. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, right, so we're basically done. Once again, if you have any questions, throw them into the chat right now. 
If not, that was uh, pretty fun. And uh, I finally can get this out of my head. Uh, if you missed the stream, the VOD will be on YouTube as usual. Some results over here. Let me just link it to the exoframe issue. And uh, yeah, I think I was just going to go with NCC pre-compilation uh, locally for the user. Because once they uh, once they add this, um, once they add the actual uh, native dependency compilation, it's going to be insane. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, maybe you, okay, we'll, we'll see how that all develops. All of that stuff is pretty fascinating. But all right, um, I guess that will be it from my side. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, feel free to join our Discord server if you have any questions left and I just, you know, disappear out of a sudden from the stream. More than happy to talk to you there and help you with your JavaScript stuff. Uh, if you missed the stream, as I already said, it's gonna be on YouTube along with the, all the other stuffs. Yeah, I guess, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.